So guys, I've been using the MacBook Air M1 edition for about two weeks now, and all I can say is, wow. So if you've watched any of my older content, you probably know that I was uh, mainly focused on iPad stuff. Because the iPad was my main editing machine, I used it for all of my YouTube stuff. However, the iPad about two weeks ago, I sold it to, well, because I purchased this M1 Mac. The iPad was brilliant. In my opinion, it was it was super fluid. It, the battery life was amazing. Uh, I like the fact that you can use the Apple Pencil with a touchscreen, so it was very precise. However, there was a few things that I missed from having a laptop previously. Now, I've never had a MacBook. That's the thing. When I say laptop, I always used to be a Windows user. Um, the iPad was the first thing that brought me into the iOS, Mac OS type of, uh, or iPad OS uh, interface. And I fell in love with it. Um, so when I decided to move away from the iPad, this was the thing that made me do that. If this didn't come out, I would still be with the iPad Pro right now. So let's go through a few things, what I've noticed over these past two weeks. Anyone that's had a MacBook previously, the design, They've obviously kept it the same. I myself, I haven't had one before. So this is all brand new to me. So when I opened it first up and I noticed that it was like cold to the touch, you got that metal feeling on the top and bottom. It just feels so premium and sturdy. It's unbelievable. Just like all Apple stuff is. All the Windows laptops I've had previously, they've they've all felt a bit like plasticky on the base and not, not as well built. So that was the first thing I noticed. With this M1, it means like app optimization. Um, not all apps are optimized for it. So there is apps that are still running on the Intel based uh, systems, but you can run them on the M1 using the Rosetta um, interface that Apple have created. Uh, they don't run as well as they will if they were native, like built for the M1, but eventually over time, this is still brand new, eventually over time, um, them apps are going to be making versions for the M1 and then they're just going to improving performance a lot lot more even some of the apps now that are running through Rosetta are running faster than uh, Intel runs them I mean I've only had this two weeks so really I'm only scratching the surface of what this machine is capable of I've been editing some videos on it editing some photos it's been super snappy it's super easy to get windows on this thing if I show you here I've actually got windows using the parallels uh, program I've actually got windows installed on this and I believe you can run any Windows app as long as, it's, as long as it's a 32-bit app. The only issue you have is if you try and run anything that's 64-bit. So as you can see, I've got full Windows. Anything I had on my desktop on the Mac version uh, is here. So I've got all my Mac files in a folder. Everything that was over there. I've got the bin YouTube folder that I had on the side and the files I had on the side. And then when you go down here, you've got all the apps as well. So literally, and you can switch back and forth. So I can switch back to this and then switch back to Windows. And if I open Activity Monitor, you can see that the, where is it? The Windows 10 currently is running using eight gigabytes of the memory. Whereas the whole machine, the memory used is 9.23 gigabytes. I did go for the 16 gigabyte version just because I wanted to future-proof it. I knew what I was going to be doing with this when it comes to photo editing and video editing, possibly doing some light gaming later on. So I knew I definitely had to get the 16 gigabyte version. 90% of people, they'll be okay with the 8 gigabyte version just because the, the RAM that's inside of this machine, this unified RAM, is not the same as your standard thinking like that RAM is when you talk about desktop machines. It's built differently. So if we switch back to Windows, so I can go on Windows, do anything I need. If, even if there's if, if there's apps that are specific to Windows and you can't get it on Mac, super easy to get them on here, download them, use them. And then all I have to do, if I want to shut down the Windows, just go and shut down, power, shut down. And this will close the app and take me back to the Mac. And that's it, app closed, which is super easy to install. Um, if you want a video on how I installed that, I'll probably make one. Now, when it comes to gaming, I've played some games. Mainly was Rocket League, and I played it for maybe 
20 30 minutes just to see how it goes put everything on high ran super smooth so i haven't extensively done uh, guinea gaming tests but if that's something you want to see i can definitely do that if you've got any games in mind just pop them down in the comments box below and i will try and get them on here and tested and see how they run the major thing i think when i see this um macbook one the way i would describe it is it's it's an ipad with a desktop experience so you've got the speed of the ipad the fluidity of the ipad the battery life on this thing is insane um i'm getting that's one thing i liked about the ipad that i could keep it on using it for so long without having to charge it and this thing is no different if i show you when i close the lid on this and this thing's on standby this sips power like nothing so if i should go on my battery preferences and i'll just go and usage history i don't know if you can see it there um I'll, I'll show you a screenshot on the screen now that straight line that is just me just closing the lid and it being on standby it, i don't think it even dropped by two percent battery life i honestly think i could charge this thing to 100 percent leave it for a week like on standby mode without touching it and when i open it it will still be on 90 percent now a lot of people may be thinking well that's nothing new for me it is now i always used to use windows laptops and i know for a fact that if i ever put my windows laptop on standby mode if i didn't switch it off by maybe end of the day like take it out of standby mode i'll be losing like 30 40 percent of battery life easy it was just nowhere near as efficient as the macbook is especially the m1 version i know apple apple tends to uh be very good with their products in standby mode but this is just on a whole new level so this is like this is a super new experience for me this whole mac thing but i'm loving it 100 um, at the moment i am still using luma fusion which i found very impressive because i actually purchased that on the ipad and i'm still able to use it to this day on the macbook later on i will be transitioning to final cut pro um, just to get more features and uh, productivity stuff like that but for now, LumaFusion is doing me fine. Uh, for photo editing, I'm using Affinity Photo. Unfortunately, I couldn't use the iPad version, so I'm going to have to purchase the Mac version. So that's another extra cost, but it is a one-time thing. It's not like you're uh, paying a monthly subscription for it. And when I mentioned about the app optimization, there's a lot of apps that are coming through now which are becoming optimized for the, the MacBook M1 that they wasn't a couple weeks ago. So, for example, the Adobe Suite now, they, I think they've got a beta release of a software that's optimized for the M1. So, in terms of performance on them, that's drastically improved. This parallels the Windows app that recently just got optimized to M1. So, you can use Windows on there. And there's just more and more every week, there's more and more apps getting optimized because Apple are pushing uh, this M1 so much that developers are rushing to optimize all their apps for it which is a good thing because I think this is uh, in the future this is what Apple is going to go to now I can see the Intel processors and machines being um, being pushed out of the situation and Apple just building everything in-house just because they're able to optimize it exactly how they want it and as well with this MacBook here no fans dead silent but the performance is just so beastly that I'm honestly like surprised at how well this works and when it comes to Apple products you know that it just works and this is no different so if you guys want to see i'm going to be making a ton of new videos with this uh, m1 if you guys want to see anything specific for me to do with this macbook here uh, leave it in the comments box below because i will check them out and i will try to do that um keep an eye out on the channel hit the like button and subscribe because like i said i'm going to be making a lot of new m1 content so keep an eye out for that and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified which usually YouTube doesn't even push it. But anyway, hit that notification bell to be notified of when new content comes out. I will catch you guys on the next one. And thank you for watching.